everybody, me and D-Mac back here with another video. Today we're doing another episode of our Extravagant and Excellent series. Only wines $50 before tax and above need apply. And we're gonna tr start up with a white, an interesting white, which I'm very excited to try. Uh, 2016 Brésiem Roussan from Eric Texier in uh, the Southern Rhone. So, uh, I had never had this wine before. It was $51.99. Uh, I think at Liberty Wines, I don't remember when I bought this or why. <laughs> I guess maybe I just thought it would be interesting. Um, let's see if I'm right, because I don't know anything about this wine other than the fact that it's, I know it's $51.99 because the price is still on the bottle. So here we, and it looks like a Liberty Wines price tag. That's why I'm thinking it was probably from there. So let's try it out. Oh yeah, very floral. Uh, Quince apple yellow like yellow apple skin a little bit of like a, a little lemony but not really intense lemon but it's a little bit of lemon there a little bit of bosque pear i think on the nose as well let's dig in and see how that tastes Lovely nose, but wow, the palate is flat. Yeah, that is not what I was hoping for at all. Flavors of apple, pear, really medium minus finish, just short. Well, that is a tremendous disappointment. There's not much about this wine to recommend. This is, uh, that's pretty uninteresting, honestly. Pretty average. Yeah, uh, wow. So here we are in the, this extravagant and excellent, excellent series is supposed to say, you know, if you're gonna spend a lot of money on a bottle of wine, is this the one to buy? And this is a big resounding no here. I would give this uh, 80 points. It is not spoiled. It is drinkable, but it is really uninteresting and kind of bland. Uh, I suspect I am not gonna drink any more of this. I bet you I can find something better in my wine fridge here to, to enjoy tonight. Okay, so let's go on to the next one and let's see, I bet you, I'm gonna guess the next one will be better because it has to be, doesn't it? Let's see what it is. All right, here we are. So bottle number two of the Extravagant and Excellent series. 2017 saint Superi Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. This is kind of one of those tweener cabs. Now, full disclosure, if you've been watching this, this video, you know that the qualifications here are $50 before taxes to be in this Price range, this one I might have actually paid a little less than that for, I don't remember. But I looked today and uh, I couldn't find any, any BC liquor store listings. Sometimes it's tough to find, but there's a fly in here and I'm just hoping it doesn't come. Okay. Um, but, uh, so I was looking on to the BC liquor store website to find it, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find any of the uh, um, private liquor store websites either here. So I looked actually on their own website in Napa Valley. It now sells for 50 bucks from them. So if you want to, if you're lucky enough to find one of these, well, lucky enough I haven't tasted it yet, but I think it's going to be good. Um, it's obviously going to cost you more than 50 bucks here in Canada since it's 50 dollars from Napa Valley. So let's see. So when I say tweener capsules, what I mean is, um, obviously you've been to a liquor store and you've seen the price of Napa caps. Uh, I was there today actually. And uh, I saw Joseph Phelps is selling for 150. And Joseph Phelps' capsule was good, but it's not, you know, there are better. So they're pretty expensive. I'd say, are they overpriced? I think you can make the argument they make lower price. Although if you watch my Cabernet video that I did a little while ago, you know, there's reasons for it. You know, uh, 
obviously the price of land and the price of grapes. A lot of the wineries down there don't own the land from which the grapes come. They gotta buy them. So the middleman wants a little of his cut, right? Anyway, so Saint Soupery is a winery we, we haven't visited yet, but we have tasted them at, at uh, the Vancouver National Wine Festival a couple times, which is probably where I got this from three years ago or so. Um, they make a lovely white blend called Virtu. It's a Bordeaux style blend, Sauvignon Blanc and Sauvignon. So good every year. Actually, we're going to Vegas soon. I'm hoping to have some of that down there because that's actually where we, we discovered it. You can find it here in British Columbia if you look hard enough, but it's not easy to find. So let's see. Is this worth 50 bucks? Or let's say in BC, or if we can find it now, if it's 50 bucks in the state, let's say it's 60, 65 here. I'm just spitballing. Mm. Wow, cedar and really intense notes of uh, blackberry and uh, cassis. It's really, at this stage of life, in 2017, obviously it's five years old, but we don't drink a lot of uh, California cabs at this age. Um, some of the cheaper ones sometimes we do. We don't buy a lot of cheap California cabs either, but when we do, we usually don't bother to age those. They're just kind of pop and pour bottles. If you find the right ones, you can get some pretty good deals from the $35, $40 range. Louis Martini comes to mind. Mm. Okay, so um, the palate mirrors the nose a lot. Uh, blackberry, cassis, cedar. There's some hints of uh, a little bit of earthy notes and some uh, minerality is nice, and there's some dried herbs there too. Like maybe, f I think it's maybe it's more fresh herbs. Tannins are still grippy. Smooth that a little bit, but alcohol's medium plus probably. Uh, California cat's got it over 14%, doesn't it? Isn't it basically law? Holy cow. If they don't want you to know, it is the, in the smallest writing you could possibly see on the front. 14.5%. Okay. And that's not a huge surprise here. Let's see if it mentioned age for 19, mon 19 months in French oak barrels. Wow. Yeah, um, so that's also one of the reasons that yeah, caps can be expensive. Uh, didn't mention new French oak, but still, 19 months in French oak, that's, that costs some money. Mm, mm, I'm getting some coffee notes now No, on the nose. Just in the couple minutes I've been drinking this, it's already starting to change a little bit. Um, some mocha notes. I almost feel like there's a little hint of like uh, toffee too. It's kind of strange for California cab, right? So the oak uh, is the oak is not over overpoweringly pronounced. On the nose, it smells like it's going to be one of those in-your-face California cabs. It's a little more subtle, a little more delicate on the paddle, on the paddle, palate, a little more delicate on the palate, and probably also on the paddle. Nice, rich and round and um, structured. <coughs> Pardon me. This could definitely age for more. I wouldn't lay it down for 20 years or anything like that, but it could definitely go three or four more. Probably, probably get it to 2027, 20, a decade in the bottle. It is quite nice. It's Napa, right? Yeah. So I recommend this absolutely. This is uh, I would give this. Uh, I'm right in between two numbers here. I'm going to say 91 points. That was uh, 91 and a half if I did that, but I don't. So I'm going to say 91 points. It's a nice wine, uh, good value for the money. If you want a California cab, much, much better than the entry level stuff you get. We had one at a party the other night, actually. Uh, we were playing a blind tasting game, and everyone really enjoyed this. Um, I instantly recognized it as a California cab, and I instantly recognized it as a kind of a low end one, I thought, anyway. 
everyone would let it with me. And I felt bad until yeah, when I when I mentioned that you know I'm the only person here that doesn't like this. It was it was a, a very traditional cheap California cab, but it turned out it was a very traditional cheap California cab. Bread and butter or something, 2020, like a 21 dollar California cab, and that's exactly what it tasted like. Um, clearly, you need to get better friends, right? No, uh, you know, it, some people that it was, it was that was a big and bold old style California cab, oaked, like really oaked, really intense, um, the kind of California cab that everyone was making 20 years ago. Um, and you know, that thing was gonna be made well, but this is not that one, was not particularly well. This is much more subtle, much more structured, much more delicate, much more interesting. I recommend this 91 points. That's a nice wine. All right, let's see what's up next. Okay, wine number three for our extravagant and excellent tasting is 2014 Equinox Merlot from Le Vieux Pan uh, on the Golden Mile Bench. So, um, if you watch my channel, you probably know I'm familiar with Le Vieux Pan quite well. We were club members for quite a while until we, we finally left the club a few years ago. Not because the club wasn't great, it is, but you know, at some point you just have too much and you're in too many clubs. Um, so, we've had this wine. Uh, other vintages of this wine in the past. I've never re re reviewed or scored this one. I don't know that I've ever actually tasted it. I may have. We were club members for a while, like I said, so we've got this wine over and over and over. It's around 90 bucks Canadian, at least it was at the time. Might have gone up now like everything else has. But let's see, is it if it's, if it's worth the money? Let's find out. Mmm, beautiful, big, black, brooding fruit, like blackberry and cassis real um, subtle oak. Some graphite, some vanilla, not really intense in the baking spice or anything like that. Hints of blueberry in the background maybe. Mm, smells good. All right, let's dive in and see how it tastes here. Praise Jesus, hallelujah. Wow, that is, that is drinking beautifully. Let's get to read the back to see what it says on here, but they, they write this in cursive and it is very tough to read the writing. But I believe it says to evolve beautifully in the cellar for many years to come. I think that was a few years ago, it's eight years old now. So immediately I'm getting some chocolate notes, some um, hints of coffee, Blackberries there, cassis, and some real brambly fruit, and some uh, like dried, dried thyme. A hint of a licoricey herb, maybe a tiny touch of dried fennel, or even like a Thai basil type of thing. Not really intense. Doesn't taste like licorice, but. There's a quality there that makes you think maybe there's some licorice qualities. Mm. Tannins are still intense. They're softening a little as it opens. I just, I decanted it, but only like a few minutes ago. So it's basically popping toward this stage. Mm. It's very dry. It's very um, medium plus tannins, medium plus alcohol. Let's see alcohol on this. 13.9 and a medium plus finish. So I'm gonna enjoy this tonight with uh, I've been braising some veal cheeks for three and a half hours. I'm gonna have that with some pasta, a little pappardelle with a veal cheek dish, which is gonna be delicious. I'm probably gonna pair lovely with this, I think. Um, but this is definitely a, it's a delicious wine. You can sit down and enjoy this, but I would have this with food. It's, it's still a big wine at eight years old. I would definitely uh, open a, some kind of red meat. The, the veal cheeks will be fine. Um, you got a ribeye in the, in the, in the oven, in the, in the freezer, I'd pop that open, um, short ribs, 
pretty much anything you do with short ribs would be good. Even like a short rib pasta, short rib ravioli. Mm. Just don't put a lot of butter on it because then that's going to probably, probably throw off the marrow, but mm. lovely. So, yeah, so that's a nice one. I'm going to, I mean, I don't think it's the best um, version of the Equinox Milo I've ever had, but it's still very good. If you've got these in your cellar, I would, I would get them out now. I'm not sure it's going to get any better. Still very good right now. I'm gonna give it 92 points. Um, is it worth 90 bucks? That's up to you to decide. I mean, maybe it was better a year ago. Maybe it'll be better in a year. It's always tough to tell with these things, right? But it's a very nice wine. The Pan doesn't make a bad wine. They, I, I, I'm trying to think if I can ha ever had a bad Le Pan wine. I, 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 I don't think so. Um, go back and look at my blog and see if I ever rated one of their wines poorly. I think. They, I seem to recall they might have had, maybe one of, the years, one of their Sauvignon Blancs one year was only like an 87 or 88. And that's about as bad as it gets. And that's still a pretty good score, right? That's still good quality wine. Um, but yeah, this is a nice 92, and I think you'll enjoy this. It's, if you can sign up for the, the, they have two wine clubs. They have a, uh, I can't remember what the entry level one is. And they have their the higher level one is called a Wine Society. That's what we were in at the time. It's, Great club. Uh, Alex Russo, who's in, who is the manager, is fantastic. Takes excellent care of you. He still takes excellent care of us. He, he treats us like family. We haven't been in the club in three years. Um, he's He's been there a decade, and that's unusual in the BC wine industry to be there that long. He's fantastic. Um, and if you join their club, and last time I looked, they were full, but you might be getting a waiting list. But they have another wine, another club, a lower entry level club. I can't remember the name of it, but I think that one's open. So, I mean, Le Vieux Pen, they make great wine. And if you don't know, the winemakers, uh, Severin Pinte, uh, who makes this one, she's also the winemaker at La Stella. So she has a background in France, but she comes here to Le Vieux Pen, makes this amazing French wine, and then just goes down the street and makes amazing Italian-style wine, which is really quite amazing. Um, it's quite a talent. Anyway, so that's it for today. So I've given you uh, two really good wines and one that I wouldn't necess necessarily spend a lot of money on. Um, you know what, in fairness, that Roussan, that may have been a bad bottle. I, you know, it wasn't obviously bad, but it was really pretty average. And I think that wine probably is better than this. The winery is better than that. You know, really, it was probably just not at its peak. Anyway, uh, the other two were very good. Really nice Cab Sauv and a delicious Merlot you're gonna enjoy. So hopefully this has given you some ideas. If you are okay with spending a little more money on wine, you're gonna get what you pay for. And I give you two bottles that are very delicious for the price. Um, and I think you'll enjoy them. Just maybe avoid that Roussan. Anyway, coming up soon, uh, the rosé video that I've been promising for months is right there. It's right there. It's going to be out in the next week or so. I promise you I have two more rosés to review. They're both from France. Um, and then coming up, I also have a cheap and cheerful one coming up. It's more good stuff. We're going on vacation in about 10 days. I'm not going to tell you where. Not Disney this time. But there'll be some pretty good wine enjoyed on that trip as well. So until next time, drink great wine. See you soon.